Hi everyone, welcome to part 2. Okay, Fisher has just played Queen takes f6. And Tal continued with Queen c7, which is a multi purpose move and hoping at last for some counterplay against the c2 pawn. It also protects the b pawn tactically because if Bishop takes b5, now there's Queen a5 check, which is gonna win the bishop. As well as that, the dangerous threat of Bishop h5 attacking f7 can now be met with the answer d5. Fischer responded sharply by castling queenside incredibly. This allows his a pawn to fall and he'd correctly assessed that it was irrelevant to the positional factors. As the rook takes a2 comes king b1. This requires strong calculating abilities as it appears black will now be able to get very good counterplay along the a file but as always Fisher's calculation is remarkably accurate. Allowing the a-pawn to drop like this with the opening of the a-file is something most club players would reject without a second thought, simply on principle, but a player like Fisher sees beyond such routine principles. Tal continued with rook a6, which is the correct move. Playing instead rook a5 to defend the b-pawn from the bishop loses quickly to bishop h5, because now if d5 to defend the f7 pawn with the queen rook takes d5 is possible because after he takes d5 rook e1 check forces mate in a maximum of 10 moves and if black tries d6 instead of d5 at this stage if d6 and rook takes d6 is possible it forces queen takes d6 and now comes queen takes f7 check winning back the rook queen takes g8 check followed up with the rook d1 and um, white will win easily thanks to this past g pawn so uh, back to the game continuation anyway is uh, king b1 oh yeah one more possibility to look at at this stage is another possibility for tal which was queen a5 strong play down to a5 looks very dangerous but it's no good because now white has b3 which defends the a1 square with his queen and white can play bishop h5 next which will be decisive so we'll go back to the game anyway Tal has just played rook a6 and Fischer continued with bishop takes b5 again going a pawn ahead but in his own words he was so intent on snatching material and not botching the attack that he missed the stronger continuation which was bishop h5 it forces d6 again if d5 then rook takes d5 is winning so d6 and now rook h1 threatening rook takes e6 check because the f pawn is pinned by the bishop the only move for black here is queen e7 but now queen h6 with queen takes h7 coming next will lead to a quick win for white. So it's unfortunate that he missed that, but he, he's still got a very strong and winning position anyway after bishop takes b5. So uh, rook b6 is what Tal played now, which is aiming at the white king, is attacking the bishop, and preparing e5 on the next move, which will attack the queen. So bishop d3 is what Fisher played to defend his bishop, which keeps the c-file safe from the queen and uh, aims at taking on h7 which you know if the bishop is permitted to do will be doomsday for black because it'll attack this rook and it can't move or the pass pawn or queen and Tal answered with the expected e5 attacking the queen which Fisher gave us the best chance to try and get a draw if he plays instead queen d8 hoping for simplification and prospects of a drawn end game white can continue with queen h6 pretty much forcing f5 to prevent bishop takes h7 but now comes queen h5 check king e7 and g4 is going to open some very dangerous lines for white and it should win fairly easily white has a sizable advantage in all resulting positions fish is about to play a brilliant move in uh, the game continuation which uh, talis just played e5 and um, if you want to try and spot it then stop the video now
f takes e5 is what Fisher played, a queen sacrifice and the strongest move in the position. White will have a huge advantage for the rest of the game. Tal had hoped that Fisher would play instead queen takes e5 check, where after queen takes e5, f takes e5, rook takes g7, there are chances to draw the end game for black despite being a pawn down. Fisher noted after this variation in his book that in top flight chess you have to drive your advantage home unmercifully. So we go back to the game continuation anyway, where of course Tal is going to accept the queen sacrifice after f takes e5 rook takes f6 and of course e takes f6 and Fisher has a rook and two pawns for his queen but the positional elements are far more important than the material the threat here is simply bishop takes h7 where the rook can't move it will be lost and it will be followed up with the queening of the g-pawn afterwards you know bishop takes it retreats and the g-pawn queens and if that happens white will be two rooks ahead and it's just it's completely lost for black and he has no way to defend the uh, the g8 square his bishop is still completely useless you know in theory it could defend g8 but there's no way to get active and uh, if rook f8 is tried in order to give back the material then a check on e1 from a rook is going to force the king away from the defense of g8 and then simply the g pawn will take with queen with a uh, you know queening and uh, it's going to be all over for black and um, if d6 at any stage then rook e1 check and rook e7 combined with the bishop takes h7 again will win although he has a queen there's no counterplay for black either so it's an incredible conception from Fisher. Tal had to try something so he went for queen c5 which Fisher gave as the only move if instead queen b6 aiming for the f pawn then simply rook hf1 to defend it and white can continue with the plan of taking on h7 with the bishop which he was now able to do in the game continuation and this allows Tal to play queen g5 which is going to win the f pawn at least after his rook is taken bishop takes g8 and if white tries rook hf1 at this stage then black has rook takes g7 f takes g7 queen takes g7 which allows him to retain his f pawn which is something that fisher didn't let happen in the game continuation because he played bishop takes g8 so after queen takes f6 there's rook hf1 queen takes g7 and bishop takes f7 check so king d8 is the move that tau played is the only reasonable move you know it allows him to survive into an end game but it's a hopelessly lost endgame. Two rooks are far stronger than a queen anyway, but on top of that, white has two extra pawns and a far better bishop, not to mention a safer king. Fisher can now play bishop e6, thanks to the pin on the d7 pawn, because of the rook at d1. And Tal continued with queen h6, which allows Fisher the tactical shot bishop takes d7, because after bishop takes d7, there's rook f7. So the h pawn, h pawn, sorry, is falling here. Rook queen takes h2, but now rook d takes d7 check, and the resulting end games are completely winning for white. Fisher got some time on the clock now with a few checks after king e8. He uh, shuffled Tal's king around a bit, and after king e8, he played rook d1, which prevents any checks from the queen. And you know he's prepared to exchange his g pawn for. Tal's b pawn, but Tal elected instead to advance it with b5. So now rook b7 attacks it again, queen h5 defends it. If instead queen takes g3, rook takes b5 is a simple technical win. So queen h5 and now g4, which is a nice tactical shot that Tal saw through and played queen h3. If instead queen takes g4, now rook h1 threatens rook g8 mate forces queen d4 to defend but now comes a rook h8 check anyway because after queen takes h8 she's forced as rook b8 check winning the queen and the game easily so queen h3 is what Tal did play and now g5 advancing the pass pawn queen f3 attacking the rook so rook e1 check after king f8 the b pawn is falling 
and black's running out of decent moves. There's the potential for tactical threats on the king and queen. So tile play king g7. And I can rook b6, which threatens rook f6. So queen g3 attacking the rook. Rook d1 and queen c7. If instead queen takes g5, then rook d7 check is winning. After king h8, rook b8 check, queen g8. Rook takes g8, it's completely won. So queen c7, and now rook d d6, where the threat is rook g6 check, which will win the queen tactically. So queen c8, and now b3, which makes uh, some breathing space for the king and prepares the advance of these queenside pawns to black is hopelessly lost. Tal tried king h7, but after rook a6, he finally resigned because he has to give up his queen in order to avoid getting mated. The threat is rook a7 check, followed up with rook d d7, and two rooks on the seventh rank. On top of that, Fisher can mobilize his queenside pawns any time he chooses, and the resultant positions in any case are completely winning for white. So it was an incredible game from Fisher. We've uh, got a bit of time left, we may as well have a replay quickly. So uh, the Sicilian defence, which Fisher was an expert in both sides of, and um, he punished Tal very severely for playing inaccurately in the opening. This uh, Queen C7 continuations are always a bit risky because of uh, Knight B5. You know, if A6 hasn't been played, there's a uh, you know it, it is a nice dynamic move. Queen C7. There's threats down the C file. There's later threats with Knight G5 and H2 can be a problem. But it's uh, you know it's very important. In, in you know most openings, not all of them, but most of them to play the opening accurately. And Tal, you know, a world champion, he should know the uh, the dangers of playing openings accurately well, and you know he should know the openings themselves very well. And uh, it's surprising that he would play in this way. It's uh, yeah, an unfortunate oversight. But generally, you know, even if you make a small mistake in the opening, you can get away with it when you're playing against uh, you know a normal kind of player but against someone like Fisher who uh plays with you know pretty much perfect accuracy at the height of his career his uh, his play was uh, perfect for example this queen sacrifice is easily the strongest move in the position you uh would do very well to recover from an opening mistake or you know, an inaccuracy in the middle game, or especially in the end game. And, uh, well, it's a perfect example of that, this game. It's quite a famous game. You might have seen it on uh, chessgames.com, or I think it might have been done on YouTube already, but it was, uh, you know, it's such a great game that I thought it would be a shame not to include it in the series. It was uh, the only... Um, well, no, I don't think it was his only loss, but it was it was the, um, the only game the only uh, one that Tal lost in the Bled tournament of uh, 1961 I think and um, Fisher was completely undefeated in that tournament but Tal got more wins so uh, he ended up winning the tournament in the end but Fisher won this game it was his first win against Tal and uh, a very impressive one especially considering he was only 18 years old so uh, great tactics going on they're both very tactical players so it was bound to be uh, that kind of game and um, yeah it was just a virtuoso display of uh, opening middle game and end game from Fisher you know pinpoint accuracy except for that one move where uh, Bishop takes b5 you see he went after the material which some say was one of his weaknesses being a material player but um, I don't know it's uh, it's hard really to fault his play in that game as a brilliant queen sacrifice and a brilliant game. So I hope you enjoyed it and please leave any comments or thoughts. Thanks very much.